Hey everyone, it's Tom Abbott here. It happened twice that week. I received calls from two very different organizations. Now one providing surgical devices to hospitals and the other offering IT solutions to SMEs. And they were both looking for help building a sales culture. Well, my response was very much the same. You already have a sales culture. <laughs> now, after a short pause on the telephone, I continued. You already have a sales culture. It's either a good one or a bad one. Now, culture is defined as the attitudes and behavior, the characteristics of a particular group. So your organization already has a sales culture. The question is, how effective is it at helping your team adopt desired selling behaviors and reach their maximum sales potential? So in my work with multinationals with sales teams throughout Asia Pacific, I've noticed some best practices for building high performance sales teams and sales cultures. And by incorporating these four important steps, your organization can experience those benefits too. Step one, common vision. You start by defining sales culture. Now that means different things to different people. So I start facilitation sessions with stakeholders by asking what would be the perfect sales culture or what would it look like? What would be happening? What would you notice? What would other people notice? How will you know when you've got the perfect sales culture? And you'll have all sorts of definitions. I mean, one person might say, the back office and front office staff would work more closely together. Another might say, sales reps would be more confident, optimistic, and persistent. Someone else might say, they'd be excited and passionate about selling. Another might say, customers would notice how driven, enthusiastic, and responsive our reps are. So first, agree on a common vision of what you want as an organization, and then start working towards how you will achieve it. Step two, top management commitment. Having the commitment of top management will greatly increase the likelihood of buy-in and implementation throughout the organization. This cannot be driven by human resources or learning and development alone. With a recent client, I worked directly with the regional director and his senior team, business development director, country director, and human resources director, to understand their definition of the perfect sales culture. We then had a context setting conference call followed by a two day strategic session with all country directors and division managers to come up with a common definition of sales culture and get their input on how we could achieve it. With transparency across all levels, this program can now be rolled out to the sales teams. Step three, dedicate the resources. Building the perfect sales culture takes time and resources. It takes more than sending your team for sales training once a year. I mean, how will it be successful if your team returns to an environment that doesn't support what they've learned? Their day-to-day -day environment must support their learning so that their new behaviors become habits. And so these new behaviors become habits in order for sales to improve. Despite that, what do most leaders do when sales don't improve after training? They send the team for more training. <laughs> so what can you do to ensure your team consistently adopts desired selling behaviors? Well, you need to be willing to invest in coaching, both internal and internal, on-the-job mentoring, additional training, train the trainer, motivational sales talks, team meetings, sales videos, webinars, mobile templates, sales tip cards, etc, etc, etc. Don't worry, if you don't have the budget now, at least start planning to ensure that you'll have the financial resources that you'll need in the next financial year to support the program. Step four, incorporate appropriate metrics. I mean, the purpose of having metrics is to have clarity on the effectiveness of building your perfect sales culture. So what would be the first small signs that it's working? How will you know? Well, the best way to do that is to incorporate both qualitative and quantitative criteria. Now, quantitative criteria includes sales volume in dollars or units, 
growth over previous years, the number of new accounts, and profitability. Qualitative criteria includes attitude, product knowledge, communication skills, personal appearance, customer feedback, selling skills, and personal initiative. So when assessing the performance of your sales team, be sure to differentiate between aptitude and attitude. When in doubt, train a poor aptitude, but fire a bad attitude. So when I'm speaking with directors and sales managers within SMEs and MNCs, I remind them that walking the talk will greatly increase the likelihood of buy-in and implementation throughout the organization. I've also noticed that at times this perfect sales culture already happens for them at least a little bit. I'm always curious about what do they do to make that happen? So ask yourself, what's already going well? What's the next small step that you're going to take? What would it take for you to get one step closer to the perfect sales culture? So I'm curious about your experience. What do you think makes up the perfect sales culture? Please share your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. What's working? What's not working? What would the ideal perfect sales culture look like? I'd love to read your comments. Well, I hope you found these tips valuable and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Tom Abbott here. I'll see you next time.